In this presentation, we will put together an amortization schedule related to a bond premium using the effective method. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. This is going to be our information on the left. We're going to have the face amount of the bond, 100000 Stated rate, 12%. That's what's actually on the bond. The market rate is 10%. Therefore, the stated rate is greater than the market rate, and that means that we're going to have a premium. We issued the bond at 103546 The difference here, 103546 minus the 100 or 3546 being the premium. It's going to be a two-year bond and we pay semi-annual, therefore four periods of two years is what we will have. So if we look at that in context, we always want to look at the trial balance and get some idea of what's actually happening in terms of recording this information. When we put it on the books, we put it on the books as a liability for bonds payable 100000 and we put the premium on the books here of uh, 3546 and we received cash of 103546 the carrying amount then at this point in time, when we just put the bond on the books, is is the uh, adding these two together, the two credits, 103,546. Now, the issue here, of course, is that we make payments on this bond. Uh, we don't pay back the principal. So if this amount here, the 100,000, doesn't go away, unlike a loan or an installment loan where we make partially interest in principal payments. So what we're going to do is just leave that on the books. We're going to pay interest at the stated rate at 12%. But then we have this question of what do we do with this 3,546? That that's payable's got to go away. The premium's got to go away somehow uh, by the end of this because once the bond is paid off, it needs to go away. Well, how are we going to do that? Why is it there in the first place? It's there in the first place because we issued the bond for more than the face amount. Why did we do that? Because there's a difference between the, the interest rates. And therefore, what would be a logical reason for us or way for us to get rid of this premium over the life of the bond? Well, we could expense it in interest expense as we go because that's really what it is. It's interest expense. Now, the easiest way to do that is a straight line method. We're going we're gonna to go to the effective method, but just to show you just the easiest way to do this. Uh, and notice the effective method is the preferred method under generally accepted accounting principles. Typically, it's, it's more precise. But the straight line method is easy to see, so let's take a look at that. If we took the 3,546 and we just divide it by the number of periods, 4, because it's 2 years and we pay semi-annually, semi, uh, then we can just get 887. So that's going to be the 3,546 divided by 4 gives us 887. And then if we were to just uh, reduce this amount by 887, reduce the premium by 887 each time period, meaning uh, this number now is going to be this number minus this number, and then the new carrying amount is going to be the 100,000 minus the unamortized premium or the 97,341. And then if we were to do that again, we'd say now we're going to take the prior number minus this number to get the 1,773. The carrying amount would be the 100,000 minus the 1,773 for the new carrying amount. We did it again. This number minus this number gives us this number, and then the carrying amount being the 100,000 minus the 887. And finally, one more time, we do the same 887. 887 minus 887 is zero. The carrying amount then is the 100,000 minus zero, or 100,000. And then at the end of the term, then, that would be one way that we can expense these what we would do is do a journal entry and expense these each time uh, and we would be left with at the end of the day this would then go away at, at each time period it would slowly be expensed evenly to interest expense and we would be left with just the bond payable then we, we would just pay it at the end of the term as we would just like any kind of note payable uh, we would we would credit cash and debit the bond payable now the problem with that is that the expense isn't really in accordance with the matching principle exactly because we should do some kind of effective method. We should be changing the amount that's going to be allocated between uh, to, to interest based on what the carrying amount of the bond is. So to do that, we, we should do the effective method. This is the preferred method. 
bit more complicated method. The difference between the two methods might not be material. It might not be significant for decision making, and therefore uh, the, this the straight line might be easier to use then. But this would be the preferred method. So we have the unamortized premium here. So this is what we're going to start with in period one. We're going to say that uh, the unamortized premium is the uh, 103 546, what we issued it for, minus the 100,000. That's the unamortized premium. And then the carrying amount is always going to be the 100,000 plus the unamortized premium of the uh, 3546 to get the 103 546. Now, if we go through this, then we're going to say period one, we're going to get the cash paid. Now, the cash paid is straightforward. It's what's on, it's what we promised. That's what's on the note. So that's going to be the 100,000 face amount times the stated rate, 12%. That's what's actually written in the contract. So that's going to be the 12,000, and that would be for a year. And if we divide that by two, it would be 6,000. Other way we can do that, 0.12 yearly rate divided by two, the six month rate, the time period we're looking at, times 100. Thousand, that gives us the six thousand. Then the bond interest calculation, however, is going to be calculated as the carrying amount, one hundred three five forty six times the market rate, the rate that's not on the bond, the point one, the rate we used to determine what the price of the bond will be, and that's going to be this divided by two because it's that would be for a year. We need six months, and there we have it. And again, of course, we could also calculate that as the 0.1 divided by 2 times, that would be the 6-month rate, the carrying amount, 103,546. And that would be the, the same number. We're rounding up here. Okay, so then if we subtract these two out, then we're going to say the 6,000 minus the six, uh, minus the 5,177 is going to give us the 823. So that's going to be the 823. And then uh, the unamortized premium then it's going to go down by that uh, 823. So that's just going to be the 3546 minus the 823 or 2723. That's going to be the 2723. And then the carrying amount is always just going to be the 100,000 plus the unamortized premium, 2723. So that'll give us the 102723. Uh, so if we do this again, we're just going to do the same thing. Just, I'll do the calculations because it helps us just to pick up these numbers over here. So we're just going to take the 100,000 times the stated rate, the rate on the bond, 12% divided by 2. That'll give us the 6,000. It's going to be the same, of course, each time period. So there's the 6,000, and then we've got the bond interest. The bond interest always being calculated as the carrying value, 102,723 times the market rate. 0.1 divided by 2. And that'll give us this number. If we take the difference between the two, we take the 6,000 minus the 5136, we get the 864. And then, of course, the premium amount we're going to say was 2723 uh, minus 864. And that's going to give us the 1859. So that'll be the 1859. And then we're just going to take always. The face amount, 100,000 plus the 1859, which is going to be, of course, 101,859. Uh, so if we do this again, we'll say the 6,000, again, it's obviously the same, but it's going to be the 1,000 times the stated rate divided by 2. The bond interest is going to be the carrying amount times the market rate divided by 2. The difference between those two is the change, the 907. And then the unamortized premium is going to be this 1,859 minus the 907, giving us uh, 95. This amount then is always going to be the face amount, 100,000, plus the unamortized amount, 100,952. Uh, One more time, we got the 6,000 face amount times the stated rate divided by 2. Bond interest, the carrying amount times the market rate divided by 2. The change is the difference between these two, and that's going to be 952. Then we've got uh, that bringing us down to zero at this time. And then, of course, the carrying amount is going to be the 100,000 and the zero, which is just going to be the 100,000. 
Now we'll record the first couple journal entries related to the interest and the amortization of the premium just to see how this table then will relate to what would actually be done in terms of journal entries and in terms of the trial balance. So here's our, here's our table. We're going to say that now we have the interest payments six months have passed and we've got to record the interest. So the first thing we know is happening is, is uh, cash is being paid. So cash is going down. Cash is a debit balance. We'll do the opposite thing to it. We'll credit cash. We're going to pay the 6000 That's what's actually going out. And uh, again, that's going to be the, the bond uh, amount that's on the contract times the stated rate divided by two because it's six months. And then we're going to pick up the bond interest expense from our uh, table here, which will be 5177 And then the difference is going to be the premium, which will be the 823 and of course the 5,177 and the 823 equal the 6,000. So if we were to record this out then, we're gonna say that the bond interest is uh, expense is going up by the 5,177 even though we paid 6,000 because we are in essence bringing it down by the premium and that premium is a result of interest. It's a result of the difference between the stated rate and the market rate when we issued the bond. So that's why that is happening. And then we're going to say that the premium is going to go down by the 823, not an even amount each time, because this is going to be a more proper method in order to uh, relate it to the carrying amount of the bond in a similar way that we would relate the, the note interest uh, portion versus the premium on an installment note. And so that'll give us our premium going down. And of course, the premium now matches our table. And then we have the cash going down. So if we look at what we have here in terms of our table, we're going to say that uh, the, the bond is on the books for 100. The carrying amount is going to be these two. If we add them together, uh, uh, 102, 723, matching this amount here. And, uh, and so that's what we have there. And then, of course, the unamortized amount will be here. The interest brings net income down, but uh, it, the interest is not equal to the cash because of uh, the premium being allocated. So if we did this one more time, we'll do another journal entry. It'll look very similar in terms of the accounts will be the same, but the amounts differ slightly because of our table, because of, of using the effective method. So we're just going to jump forward in time. So now it's another six months have passed. And so that's you know, obviously when, when we do these problems, we have to jump forward in time here. So we're going to say we're paying another 6000 later uh, for the interest. The bond interest portion, however, is only going to be uh, 5136 because of the premium uh, that we're going to allocate of the 864. This number plus this number will equal the 6000. So if we record this out, then the bond interest is going to go up in the debit direction. We're going to say that uh, the bond premium is going to go down. And that bond premium now will match what's on our table. And then the cash is going to go down to here. So what we have here, of course, is the is the 100,000 payable plus the premium matching what is on our carrying amount on our table. The premium, of course, also matching what is on our table. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.